Hey everyone, I'm back and this week I'm here to tell you about crime scene cakes. And I'm the person who put them there. These are three of the goriest cakes I've ever made on How to Cake It. And I wanted to talk about these cakes in honor of Crime Scene Kitchen because season two premiered last night on Fox. And these are the kind of cakes that I think would be found on a crime scene. Speaking of crime scenes, this video is sponsored by June's Journey. June's Journey is a free to download mobile game and June is the star. And while she's on this private island, she saw Solving a murder mystery while decorating around her gorgeous mansion on a beautiful island. To solve the mystery, you have to find objects and there's these beautiful scenes where you have to pick out the objects, which I happen to love if you know me. I'm one of those people who loves the like spot the difference or the like find the bird in the picture. I love those kind of games. Coat rack, fan. Hey! You can download June's Journey from the link in the description below. You're gonna have a good time playing. I need a shrub around my pool. Oh, that looks beautiful. Yes, June is going to have all her friends over. Look at that. Yes, June. Brain cake. To make this brain cake, I baked a deep red velvet cake, so I added burgundy to the batter as well, but it blew over because I accidentally left the fan on high in my professional oven. And when I took it out, it was such a mess. I remember being so upset about that, but it, it set the tone. Yeah, it's appropriate. It is, it's very appropriate. So the carving is really easy. You just gotta make sure to make a bit of an indent in the center to divide the left brain from the what? to divide the left brain from the right brain. My brain apparently is not working either way. <laughs> and the bottom of the brain. So I created these grooves in the cake and then I simple syrup the cake. For a cake like this, you can just crumb coat and chill because we're going to use some flesh colored fondant. Oh, that's the theme of all three of these cakes. Flesh colored fondant. The hardest part about the brain cake is making, well, the brain or what's time consuming rather, is to roll out all the tubes of flesh colored fondant and then arrange them on the brain to create that, you know, that brainy pattern. Brainy pattern. That brainy pattern. But according to the medical model that I had, our brains are not perfectly symmetrical. You do wanna make sure that when you're putting the fondant on, A, it's definitely sticking, and B, um, you're not leaving any openings where we could see the buttercream through. Although I would think an injured brain might have like brain matter. Ew. Ew. What kind of a crime scene is this? Or there's like... Parts? I don't know, but whoever the murderer is, they're terrifying. I hope they catch them. I don't want to find any more body part cakes. Mm, maybe all three of the cakes are the same. Same person. I just got real chills. Oh yeah, so I had to lift the brain because the, the bottom parts of the brain are kind of like hanging out the bottom. But my absolute favorite part of making the brain, because at this point, it looks more like the medical model than a real brain probably would. Not that I've seen one. Making it look bloody and wet is the key. So I mix together jam. You can use raspberry or strawberry, any red jam, but just make sure there's no seeds. I don't think anyone has a seedy brain, do you? And it's good if it stays, you know, gloopy and wet. That's the point. It's not like when I paint a cake and we want it to dry. We do not want this to dry. And we also, ugh, we also want all of the jam to seep down into the little crevices. So it's like a fresh brain. Look at it, ooh, ugh. Oh my God, look at me. And then I proceed to eat it with my fingers. Not my best day, I look very tired. <laughs> Exhausted, actually. So now moving on to heart cake, I also baked a red velvet cake. The shape is relatively simple. It's kind of more teardroppy, if you will. I begin carving the heart. It's not like a cartoon heart, but it definitely has like a bit of a teardrop shape. And then like usual, I'm going to simple syrup the cake, fill the cake, crumb coat the cake, 
And once the crumb coat is chilled, what's really important is we do wanna add some veins and arteries to the outside of the heart before we cover it with fondant. Because if we were to cover it with fondant and put veins on after. Do you have to look at real heart pictures for this? I think I did. Let me tell you that my search history is something. And then, you know, we're done the cakes and I forget all about it. And then I scroll back in my phone looking for something else and my phone is a crime scene. The veins I laid on the cake, I did purposely make them red and blue. You won't really see that. If you don't have time for that, then you can just make the veins in the same flesh tone fondant you're gonna cover the cake with. I did make this flesh tone a little pinkier. I haven't held a human heart in my hand, but I'm assuming or have I? That the flesh is, you know, not like the outside. I'm just imagining that it's more of a pinky tone. They're coming, they know what I did. <laughs> it's the SWAT team. Make sure to work that fondant into the grooves of all the veins and arteries so that you can really see them and they stand out. Tuck in the excess and then cut away the excess. And then the rest of the parts of the heart, I need to add to the heart. So kind of like with the brain cake, I had to add all the tubing. I now need to add these other parts and large valves. What we're gonna do is try to softly work that fondant into the fondant underneath. It wouldn't be natural for it to be so seamless. Yeah. It wouldn't be perfectly smooth, exactly. That would be heartbreaks. Heartbreaks. Aww. <laughs> then I added more veins and valves on the top in the same fleshy color. What body part are you gonna make next? I was just thinking that, that's why I'm getting distracted. A neck. <laughs> it's just like a log. <laughs> and then once again, just like the brain, the heart comes alive, or rather unalive, when you paint it. And I still made it rather opaque you'd want it to be really sort of bloody. There's enough food coloring in it to keep it glossy. Mmm, mmm. And then where the valves open, so where the heart must have been ripped out, I need to fill those with really goopy blood. Blech. So what I did is I melted some ganache and mixed it into the food coloring mixture. Now normally water and chocolate are a bad combination because it causes the chocolate to seize. However, in this case, I think it only adds to the look of it. What happens is the chocolate makes it look a really dark, old red, like yeah. blood that's been sitting. The leg might belong to someone else because the leg is vanilla. Mm. Hmm. The leg is a whole lot of vanilla cake that I baked in rectangles. I leveled, I removed the caramelization from the bottom and the sides, and then I cut it up into smaller rectangles so I could configure a long leg. It was a giant, that's, oh. You think that's the leg of the murder of the other two? You think this is the murderer's like karma? I just made sure that the rectangles were wider at the top and got more narrow toward the ankle. So once I have all my pieces, I line them up, I simple syrup them, and then I filled the cake with Italian meringue buttercream, of course. It's always easiest to carve a cake when it's cold. So anytime you're carving, especially something this big, if it's getting warm and room temperature, put the cake in the fridge, let it chill, let that buttercream firm up before you start to carve. A leg is something I look at every single day. But yet when I was carving it, I was like, what is a leg? And I can remember I kept looking down at my own leg. What does a leg look like? I carved the foot out separately. Out of a small rectangle of cake, you wanna make sure that the foot is you know, to scale with the leg. Don't make a tiny foot for that big leg. <laughs> Unless you're caking the dad in the Incredibles, I don't know. Oh, I iced it in red fondant? Iced it in red fondant? Yeah, yeah, I did. Whoa, I crumb coated it in red. Fondant. I mean, <laughs> buttercream. Covered, once again, flesh-colored fondant for the win. Now keep in mind, normally I ice cakes too. In this case, you only have to crumb coat because a leg is not perfectly smooth. It's not an object. Mm. At the top of the leg, which is where the thigh is cut off, I left the fondant hanging over a bit and then I pulled at it rather than cutting it perfectly so that it would be like ripped skin. And then I need to also cover the foot. 
So now what I have to do is make toes to go on the foot. Same flesh colored fondant. I'm gonna make five toes. I took off my Crocs and I looked at my toe. No. <laughs> and then I also created nails for the toes. I rolled out white gum paste really thin and then cut out little nails and added them to each toe. And then I added the toes to the foot and I did need to use lollipop sticks to keep the toes in place. Because they're solid fondant, they are heavy. So if you don't do that, they'll sort of, they'll keep moving away from the cake as you go on. But I did also start to make scratches and tears and pokes in the leg. Because you gotta assume that he put up a fight, right? You're not just gonna sit there where, while someone rips off your leg. Oh yeah, oh that's why I did the red buttercream under. Because I created a big gash in his foot and like you said, it looks like an open wound. Oh my gosh, I painted his nails yellow. Do you remember I made maggots? With a bit of my extra flesh colored fondant and then I painted them in a mixture of, I'm pretty sure it was ivory and a bit of yellow and alcohol. Ugh, it was like a bowl of maggots. Just like the arteries in the heart, with the leg I added more goopy blood in all the openings. Even some around his nail, he stubbed his toe while he was fighting. Ouch, I'm sure that was the most painful part. Like the leg cake doesn't scare me. You know what scared me? Watching Furious Pete eat it. Oh my God, he eats the toes off of a lollipop stick. <laughs> okay, there you have it. Those are the cakes from the How to Cake at Crime Scene. A human brain, a human heart, and a human leg. Let me know in the comments if you need me to cake any other body parts. Don't forget to watch Crime Scene Kitchen on Fox Monday nights. You'll see me there. Thanks to our friends at June's Journey for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click on the link in the description below to download June's Journey. You're gonna have a great time. I'll see you next week.